In this video, I'm going to show you one of the most exciting and dramatic games I have seen recently. It was played in round nine of the Tata Steel Chess Masters. We are going to have a look at the game between Parham Maksodlu from Iran, number 15 in the world, against my fellow countryman Max Varmerdan, who is playing for the first time in the Masters. But so far, with four out of eight, he's doing very well. And Maksodlu, well, he's having a very hard time with two and a half out of eight, he's in the last place, but there are no easy games and there are really hard fought games played in this event. Let's have a look and dive straight into the action because what happens is absolutely unusual and fantastic to see. Let's have a look. Maxodlu goes for the move one d4. Max goes for d5 and after c4, e6, knight c3. He goes for the Tarash variation with the move c5. And now after pawn takes d5, the main continuation is just to recapture, but Max goes for his favorite pet line, pawn takes d4. And this is a gambit. Black is going to sacrifice a pawn, but Max is the leading expert in the world with this particular system. He has um, very good results with it. And in this event, he had fantastic preparation with the black pieces also against Gukesh. He uh, had a very good equal position out of the opening with black. Three moves of opening theory, but eventually he lost in the end game. Now, let's see what happens. In that game, queen a4 was played, which is the main continuation. Here, queen takes d4 is immediately on the board. And now Max goes for knight c6, attacking the queen. The pawn on uh, d5 can, of course, not capture because that hangs the queen on d4. Queen goes back to d1. You take the pawn on d5 and here... Queen takes d5 is played, you're a pawn up, you even offer the exchange of queens, so it looks at first things have gone horribly wrong, but with the move queen c7, you're avoiding the exchange of queens. And after knight f3, black goes for the move knight f6, attacking the queen. So black will get some moves with gain of time. Queen goes back to d3, maybe not the most logical move, but the top choice of the engine, so probably this was still part of uh, Parham's home preparation. The bishop goes to e6. That's a nice spot for the bishop. And maybe at the right moment, the rook can come to d8 to hit the queen on d3. White play the move e3. And now you would like to attack the queen immediately. So a move like rook d8 looks very logical. But Max played here, the move a6, which may come as a surprise because you're a pawn down and you're playing such a slow move, but it's it's definitely worth something to cover the b5 square so that if you ever move the knight to b4, there is not a counter check with the queen or perhaps even with the bishop. So a6, it's absolutely possible. Knight g5, attacking the bishop. And white really wants to exchange that knight for the bishop, ruining the pawn structure in the center. But look, knight b4 is played, attacking the queen. There's no time to take on e6 with the idea to take on c7 next because the move knight takes d3 comes with check. So the queen got to go away and the queen also got to retain control over the c2 square because the queen uh, cannot move away and allow a knight fork on that uh, square. So the queen goes to b1 and now look at this. Max play the move bishop to c4. He's offering the exchange of light squared bishops, but the idea is that if the bishops are off the board, let's say you're going to take and the queen takes back, then black is about to play the move knight d3. The white king is caught in the center and things can go horribly wrong here for white. So bishop takes c4 is not a good move. What should white do? Well, I was doing the live commentary for the Dutch audience and my first thought here was to play the move a3 to kick the knight away. And okay, if you take on f1, you're going to take back with the rook and well, the knight got to move again. You definitely have compensation, but whether it's enough, well, that's another story. Interesting moment of the game already. Instead, Maxodlu didn't play the move a3. He went for the move knight ge4. What he wants is that black is gonna take and then the queen takes on e4 with check, hits the bishop and that slows down Black's initiative, but the key move here is to castle queenside. That's a huge move. Your king is out of the center, away from any potential queen check on e4, and the rook is doing a tremendous job on the d-file. Knight takes 
F6 is played. And here we had a lot of fun looking at this uh, position with the Dutch audience at the, uh, at the venue. Because you can of course take back and Max eventually play this move. But one move which caught my attention was the intermediate move, knight d3 check. So what happens here? You, you don't want to go to the d-file and stand in the file of the rook. You also don't want to go to e2 because then you set up a discover check with the knight and bishop. You got to take, but after bishop takes d3, the queen is trapped on b1. But look at this, knight fd5 and white stays in the game. You're attacking the queen with the knight and you're interfering on the d-file. So queen takes d3 is a threat. If you do take on d5 to keep the attack going, it's knight takes d5, queen a5 check. And also the queen is still hanging. So only move is bishop d2 with a counter attack on the queen. Now the best move is queen takes d5 to capture the knight, protect the bishop, bishop still hits the queen, queen goes to c1. And after king b8, you gotta do something about this threat of queen takes g2, white can play the move f3. He's an exchange up and even also has an extra pawn. But still, there is practical compensation. The bishop can come into play, can put a rook on e8. White is better, but things are far from simple. This was definitely something Max was calculating, but he decided in the end just to recapture on f6, which is a better move. Well, now the move bishop takes c4 played, queen takes c4. The king is stuck in the center, but white goes for the move queen e4, offering the exchange of queens. But after queen takes e4, knight takes e4, the knight can come into c2, which looks really strong and is a good move. But Max played here the move f5 first. He wanted to force the knight to go to an inferior square. So the knight went back to g3 to hit the pawn on f5. Now after knight c2, king e2, knight takes a1, black is a full rook up. But not for long, because after bishop d2, white hits the knight on a1 with the rook. If the knight tries to escape via c2, there is rook c1, and you're going to win back the knight. And okay, then you're only an exchange up as black, but look at the pawns on the king side. They are really weak, vulnerable, and white is about to win second pawn as well. So there's no time to invest any additional time in uh, trying to save the knight. A much better move played by Max, is bishop g7. So you're saying, okay, white, you can take that knight in the corner and I'm going to take the pawn on b2. But look, first f4 is played because before taking on b2, you really want to ruin the structure. Now, there are various options. You can just uh, take on f4 and after bishop takes b2, it's better for black to have these double pawns. It will be harder for white to create a passed pawn on uh, that side. And well, this is looking very good. Well, we get to see something very similar in the game because after knight f5, hitting the bishop, bishop takes b2 was played, rook to b1, hitting the bishop, and the bishop goes back to a3. Pawn takes f4 and rook h2 e8. Bishop e3, stopping the check. And here, well, the bishop just went back to f8. Definitely not forced, but the bishop is doing okay here, covering squares, and it's not easy for the knight to, uh, to become active. So let's pause here for a second. You see that white is having two extra pawns on the king side, but black has an extra pawn on the queen side. So the main plan here for black is to both activate the rooks and to launch the pawns and try to create a passed pawn. Now that's going to take some time, while in the meantime, white is trying to generate some counterplay with a move g4. Black goes for b5. King f3. So the king also tries to help the advance of the pawns on the, that part of the board, but now the rook comes in. And after knight g3, the rook goes to a3 and hits the pawn on a2. And you would expect y2 just to protect the pawn on uh, a2, which is sensible and absolutely okay. But the move knight e4 is played, allowing black to capture. And Marsodlu is looking for active counterplay. Hits the rook and the pawn on h7. So if the rook would go away, then it's knight takes h7. You're hitting the bishop. The bishop can go away. And this looks good for black. But you should also reckon with white's pawns coming forward. Look at this. This is anybody's game. And keep in mind that the rook on b1... It makes sure that it's 
not easy for black to push the b-pawn. Well, if the a-pawn is pushed, then the pawn on b5 can be taken. Not simple at all. But look what Max did here. Instead of moving the rook away, well, he moved the rook away, but look at this. Rook takes e3. Exchange sacrifice, which really caught my surprise. But his idea is that if you take with the king, it's bishop c5, check. After the king goes away, you can take the pawn on f2. And black is in really good shape. So, pawn takes e3 played. Rook takes h2. And now you're even protecting the pawn on h7. It's a sharp end game. But black is in really good shape, of course. Knight d5, look at this knight. This knight is in the middle of the board and looking for tactical opportunities. One of the ideas is to work together with the rook so that the rook can come in to c7. Therefore, king b7 played, rook c1, and the bishop goes to d6 to guard this entry square on the c file. And now, e4. Rook h3 check, forcing the king to go back to the second rank. King e2. So the king is walking in the direction of these connected past pawns. Black goes for the move h6, maybe not needed, but okay, it's not really bad. e5, hitting the bishop. The bishop goes back to b8 as the bishop got to retain control over that entry square. But now the bishop, on one hand, it's making it harder for white to push the pawns. If you ever play f5, the pawn on e5 will be taken. But at the same time, it's not very active and it no longer does support the advance of the, of the queen side pawns. What should Y do? Well, probably should try to stop the advance of, um, of this uh, B pawn, placing the rook on B1, but instead rook D1 is played. Now after the move A5, rook A1 is played, maybe also not the best move, something like rook B1 is very interesting to hit the pawn on b5. If you now advance the pawn, the idea is to give up the knight for these two pawns. And black is no longer able to create create a new queen. It's three versus two on the uh, king side and very good drawing chances here as likely the remaining pawns will be exchanged at some point. But okay, rook a1 played. Black goes for the move a4, rook b1 now hitting the pawn. King c6, knight b4. Here you gotta be careful because there are all sorts of knight forks if you go king c5, it's knight a6, winning the uh, bishop on b8. Even that is, by the way, not uh, not that clear, but should be uh, holdable for, uh, for, for white. So after knight b4, king b6 played, and white brings the king to d2. All right, so many possibilities. Difficult to say what is best. Uh, something like rook g3 is some move we analyzed. But after knight d5, okay, you're, you're giving a check. And, um, well, after something like a king a5, rook c1, we get something similar to the game, while king c5 is probably not too great because of knight c3, with a lot of pressure against the pawn on, uh, on b5. Anyway, rook g3, interesting uh, idea. Um, rook h4 was played, very similar, and also black keeps the rook on the h file, so that white is not able to attack it with its own rook. Now, we looked at various options. Knight e5 was played in the game, but I want to point out this idea. It's maybe not the best move, king d3, but if you do take the pawn, it's knight e5 check, and now you got to choose where to go with the king. Probably to go with the king to the a file is the best move, but what, what I found very interesting is that if you play king c5, there is this move, king e4, and there's just all of a sudden a mating threat with the move rook c1, the king is caught in the middle of the board. That's absolutely unusual, but you see that white's pieces are working better together. And then having uh, two minus pawns, it's not really relevant if your king is just caught in a, in a mating net. Well, anyway, king d3, interesting move. Knight d5 was played, the king went to a5, and here again there are options like knight e7, or even a move like uh, knight b4. And, uh, well, again, there is this possibility to play knight c6. I, we looked at this idea. If you just ignore the threat and after knight c6, you really want to push your king together with the pawns. So hoping that black is, um, sorry, that white is going to take the bishop. Well, in that case, it's rook b4 with checkmate. So that's another mating pattern in this uh, endgame. So really exciting uh, stuff. However, this was not played. And, of course, after knight b4, there are other moves. You can move the bishop away and things are not looking uh, too bad for black at all. You just got to be patient and not uh, spoil your uh, advantage, of course. So rook c1 on the board, rook h2, 
King D3, A3, now the pawn is really getting fast, but the white rook is penetrating into black's position. So if the bishop would ever move, you've got to reckon with mating patterns with rook A8. For instance, the push of the A pawn just runs into rook takes B8 and you cannot make a new queen because of rook A8 with checkmate. So the bishop went to a7. Now it's not really possible to go rook a8 because it does run into king a6 and the rook is out of play. The a pawn is way too strong. But rook c7 was played in the game. Now rook h3 check. Clever check because if the king goes back, then you create a square for your bishop on d4. And the bishop does a really great job of taking away some squares and supporting the advance of the uh, A-pawn. So Parham, instead of defending passively, he tried this move, King E4. Now the action is starting, guys. Let's see. Bishop is under a threat. So the bishop got to move. It went to F2. Now Rook takes F7 is played. So you take away this uh, pawn and you're even threatening to push your pawn to E6 and try to promote it yourself. So this is also another critical moment. What should be played here? Well, you would like to play the move a2, but there is something like rook f8 and there's counterplay. Once again, there's this mating threat. And if you go back with the idea to meet this check with bishop a7, well, then it's knight b4. This knight is so annoying and it wraps up the pawn on a2 this time. So not easy to say what is the best move, but I really like the move played by Max. Before pushing the pawn, he first drops back with the bishop to c5 so that the bishop covers both the a7 square. There's no check and the rook can also not be activated via f8 to a8. Well, rook c7 is played, but now a2. Look at this. If you take the bishop, black is just first and promote its a pawn. Therefore, rook c8 is, uh, is played. Threatening a checkmate again, but now the king goes to a4 with the idea that if you give a check, the king comes to b3 and you're able to obstruct the a-file to interfere with the move bishop a3, after which the a-pawn can promote. Well, look at this, e6, played in the game, and still there are some, um, some serious issues. You cannot promote because of rook a8 and you pick up the queen. But what should you do? Well, the most logical move we have seen already in the previous line is here, just to play bishop a3. That's the line we were discussing with the Dutch audience and it looks very strong. You're no longer able to stop this a pawn. If you play knight c3 with the idea to give a check and win the pawn, it's rook takes, you're eliminating the attacker and then you promote your a pawn. And this is decisive, black is winning. While after pushing the pawn to e7, now it's time for bishop takes e7. After knight takes e7, it's time to play the move rook a3. First place the rook on the a-file so that rook a8 is never an issue. If you go back with the rook to c1, it's a1 queen. And this endgame, it should be winning. It's still not that simple, I think, but it should be winning. Okay, was not played. Max had a different idea. He went for this move, rook a3 first. And it also looks very strong. But now, the most exciting and bizarre moment of the game. White just play the move, rook takes c5 and black promotes to a new queen. So you're a full queen. Well, not a full queen, but it's a queen versus a knight. But white does have a passed pawn. The move e7 is played. You're not even really threatening to promote yet because there's always queen e1 with a skewer, you're picking up the queen. But this should be winning. That's what everybody was thinking. But is it that simple? Let's have a look. So if you do give a check, for instance, a logical move, the king is going to f5 and the king is absolutely safe and can try to run away via f6 to f7 and you cannot easily stop the pawn. If you try rook d3, for instance, to, um, to eliminate the knight on d5 and then wrap up the pawn on uh, e7, well, there's knight b6 check. And if king b4, it's rook e5 and all of a sudden you're just winning here because you're attacking the queen you're supporting the pawn on um, e7. And if you set up this idea with queen b1, with the idea that after promotion, there's rook d8 with a discovered check, you're about to win the queen. But now, beautiful move, rook e4 with a counter check. And the game is just over. 
So things are far from simple, in fact. And Max thought probably that he is just winning with the queen up. Everybody, the whole world is thinking he's winning. But it's not true. He played here the move queen h8 to cover the e8 square. But now, Marsolo was looking, staring at the board. And then he saw this move, rook c8. Fantastic idea, just deflecting the queen. You cannot take because of knight b6 with a knight fork. King b3, knight takes c8, and the e-pawn is too strong. Even if you try rook a1 with the idea rook to, uh, to e1, well, it's uh, king d3. And after rook e1, you can uh, just push your pawn. The knight supports the pawn. Then it's f6, f7. White is winning. Absolutely amazing turnaround. And Max, absolutely in disbelief, played here. The move queen h7 check. But now it's f5. And you see that the king in the middle of the board, with the support of the knight, it's dominating the queen on h7 and the rook on a3. You, um, you can try various things. If you try rook, e, uh, sorry, rook a1, you can get the new queen. And after rook e1, it's knight e3. And the checks are over. So that's not, uh, not working. If you play the move rook g3, as that's what, uh, what Max played, then it's e8 queen. And after rook takes g4, king e5. And, um, well, here Max resigned. He is a piece down. There's only one more check on g7. But after king d6, the checks are over. White is just winning. This is just a, such a heartbreaking loss. You were winning, or much better, technically winning for almost the entire game. But also credits to Parham Marsodu for putting up such an amazing resistance and he got rewarded in the end with an well with an amazing escape look at this position once again it's a queen versus a knight but apparently this position is not winning for black anymore absolutely insane probably black should just give a number of checks and it, it will be a draw but this is something you only normally you only see it in uh, end game studies not in top grandmaster games hope you enjoyed this game let me know in the game what you in the comments what you think of this game and make sure to subscribe of course see you soon again